Hello, my name is David. I'm going to talk to you about part one of the speaking part of the C1 the Tactics exam. How long is part one? It's, a, it's about three minutes. Okay, there's four minutes if it's a group of three, which it sometimes might be, but if there's the normal two candidates, everything takes around three minutes. What happens? Well, the examiner will ask you and your partner some questions separately and you reply to the examiner. Okay, you don't have to talk to your partner in this part of the exam. The questions are, he will, the examiner will alternate between you and your partner and you answer directly to the examiner. Don't don't interrupt your partner or let them speak and then you will have your chance. Okay, so what do they ask about? Well, they're going to ask about things like free time and sports and hobbies, work and studies, friends and family, house, your neighborhood, the district you live in, media, okay, they, uh, or other types of entertainment. They might ask you about wishes and future plans and what you want to do in the future or what you would like to do or in a perfect world, what would happen, this type of thing. Okay, so some of the language will be conditional, speculation. Some of the language will be about things that are very close to your personal experience. But other times you need to speculate and talk about the future and wishes. What happens if you don't understand the question here? Maybe at the beginning of the exam, you know, you want to get in, but you, uh, you might not quite get the way the examiner speaks or whatever. Well, just ask them politely to repeat. The examiner will not change or paraphrase or explain any vocabulary. They will repeat the question again. They will stick to the script. It has to be the same for everybody. Okay, so you can ask them, please, could you repeat that? Could you say that again, please? The, it's making a start, okay? So this is the first part of the exam. It is part of the exam and it is assessed, okay? So remember, bear that in mind. But also, it's a chance to get to know the other candidate, their voice and the examiner's voice and how things are going to work. So listen carefully to the examiner and the things they say, even though, the other candidates, excuse me, even though you don't have to comment on them. This is a chance to make a good impression, make a good start. It won't be, if you do badly in part one, it, won't, it doesn't mean you fail, you can improve during the rest of the exam, and the examiner won't give you the mark after part one, but you can make a good impression, pronunciation and intonation with your attitude. Questions are nearly always about everyday topics, although there is some speculation about the future and some, some opinion, okay? So don't overthink it, concentrate on answering in a natural way and extending sufficiently. So, that, about extension, okay? You don't need a very long answer, but you, you must extend further than yes, no, blue, green. No? So, for example, do you enjoy eating in restaurants? No. This is not going to get you any marks because you haven't shown any language. No, I prefer to eat at home because I enjoy cooking and spending time with my friends and family. Here you've extended, give an example, okay? Use different, a diff, use, use some different tenses, Okay, and you're giving them more language to assess you on, which is what you want to do. You want to show them your C1. Here are some typical questions you might be asked. Do you live on your own or with your family? What do you like about living on your own or with your family? What do you like about your neighborhood? What would you improve about your neighborhood? What would you recommend about your university or school? What would you improve about your university school? How do you keep up with the news? What are the advantages of newspapers? They're general topics, okay? But you still have to give some language. You can't just answer with very short answers, okay? How do you prepare for this? Well, you know the typical subjects, okay? So prepare some specific vocabulary. If, don't prepare speeches or prepared answers. That doesn't work. It won't sound fluent but you can prepare vocabulary that you think you might need. For example, if you're talking about the media, there are lots of specific vocabulary you can use. Some of these are quite complex, but if you use them, it will be good for you. The media, broadcast, tabloid, rolling news, fake news, echo chamber. And you're going to talk about likes, dislikes. You're going to talk about things you'd like to do in the future, things like that. Think about the, the grammar and vocabulary you need and variety to express these things. So if you just say, I like, so it's good English, but you could say, uh, what I enjoy is, 
I have an interest in, I would go for, I have a preference for. Think about variety in your language. Okay, thank you. Now we're going to see some of the other parts of the example. 